Right. So uh, my name is David Kuhn, and uh, the book that I'm going to be talking about is it's called Turning the Page, Storytelling as Activism in Queer Film and Media. Uh, and it was inspired by a couple of desires on my part. One was a desire to uh, do some work that engaged with uh, the producers and creators of media. Most of my other scholarship, it just looks at kind of the finished product and studying film and television texts. Uh, there's, there's the book. Uh, and this one uh, allowed me to, to do some work with the people who create the media. Uh, and also, uh, was inspired by a desire to engage politically with uh, LGBTQ social justice movements uh, and to try to use my scholarship as a way of helping to advance those movements. And so um, I was able to kind of bring those two together in this, uh, in this project. So, um, not surprisingly, uh, LGBTQ people, as you know, have faced uh, oppression from the normalizing forces of mainstream society for quite a long time. And this oppression has been created and sustained uh, largely through stories and narratives uh, that are circulated by powerful sociocultural institutions, uh, which have generally sustained the hostile environments uh, that the LGBTQ movements have long worked to uh, change and to try to overcome. So for example, over the years, medical professionals uh, have circulated narratives in which queer people were pathologized and presented as uh, curable or treatable. Uh, meanwhile, the criminal justice system uh, generally presented queers as criminals, uh, people who were illegal just by their very being. Uh, meanwhile, popular media for many, many years sort of left LGBTQ people invisible. Uh, and when they did start to present stories of LGBTQ folks, uh, they usually were presented as either pathetic victims uh, or monstrous villains or ridiculous characters who were largely the butt of every joke. These were, for a long time, the dominant narratives. Uh, scholars working in the field of critical race theory uh, have long emphasized the value of voice and storytelling as tools for combating and overcoming discrimination against any marginalized groups. Uh, these scholars have argued that counter storytelling uh, can be used to dismantle dominant ideologies uh, by pointing out the flaws in the um, naturalized worldviews that those ideologies present. Uh, so while LGBTQ populations have long been oppressed and silenced by dominant narratives, individuals and groups have offered plenty of counter narratives to challenge and disrupt those mainstream views. Uh, so as just a couple of examples, we can look at a lot of avant-garde filmmakers working in the 1940s and 50s. Uh, in the 1970s, we saw a rise in documentarians and lesbian feminist filmmakers challenging uh, mainstream views. Uh, the 1980s uh, saw a lot of AIDS activist video makers um, kind of using video as a, as a tool for their own activism. So LGBTQ people have always uh, pushed back to try to tell their own stories. Uh, so my book, Turning the Page, uh, explores three nonprofit organizations that have made significant contributions to uh, this ongoing legacy of queer counter storytelling. Uh, the first organization I look at is called In the Life Media. And that's, uh, it's an educational organization that for over 20 years produced a news magazine program uh, that focused on LGBTQ issues uh, and aired, uh, the show was called In the Life and it aired on public television, though was never sponsored uh, or supported by PBS, the public broadcasting system. So the producers had to go city to city, station to station to get the show on the air um, across the country. Uh, when the show wrapped, they uh, migrated the whole, the whole series uh, and all of its kind of raw materials to the UCLA Film and Television Archive, where it became uh, an online digital archive that is now fully accessible. So we have kind of 20 years of LGBTQ history captured in that archive, which is really fantastic. Uh, the second organization I look at is called Power Up, uh, which stands for the Professional Organization of Women in Entertainment Reaching Up. And this is a nonprofit educational organization that's dedicated to uh, training and mentoring women and LGBTQ filmmakers while producing award-winning short and feature-length films. And then the third organization is uh, Seattle's $3 Bill Cinema, uh, a nonprofit arts organization that focuses on creating events that bring together communities. Uh, they run the Twist uh, Queer Film Festival in the fall, and in the spring they do the Translations uh, Transgender Film Festival, as well as another uh, or a number of other events around the year. Uh, and they also run a program called Real Queer Youth, which is a filmmaking and media literacy program for uh, LGBTQ teens and their allies. Uh, and one that we actually hosted uh, a round of Real Queer Youth on our campus uh, two summers ago. 
So my exploration of these organizations is rooted in interviews that I conducted with key personnel at the various organizations. Uh, and that is then paired with uh, textual analysis of the content that the organizations have created, uh, including films, television programs, and uh, the festivals. And along the way, the discussion engages in a pretty wide variety of issues and concepts, including questions about authorship and voice, citizenship, assimilationist versus liberationist political strategies in the LGBTQ movements, uh, the creation and maintenance of communities, both concrete and imagined, uh, the performative nature of documentary filmmaking, uh, PBS and its failure to live up to its stated mission and ideals, the importance of publicly accessible queer archives, the cultural work done by film festivals, both queer and otherwise, uh, and critical pedagogy, media literacy, and anti-oppressive education. So I believe that the, the counter storytelling efforts of the organizations that I study contribute to the broader LGBTQ movements in kind of three key ways. Uh, first, they provide inspirational images uh, that expand the possibilities of what it might mean to be queer in our society. Additionally, they preserve and share accounts of the triumphs and the setbacks of LGBTQ people in our society. And finally, they help to sustain a discursive queer counter public that provides a base for further social justice and political efforts. The organizations that I study recognize that inaccurate stories that circulate in popular culture are part of the problem and not just a reflection of that problem. And in response, they are actively working to change the media landscape that has long supported the erasure and marginalization of queer people. So in this way, uh, they are using storytelling as a creative form of activism, one that I believe is absolutely vital to the success of the ongoing LGBTQ movements. So thank you.